understanding, the anointing. So many of you, you understand anointing as power. That's one aspect of the anointing and that aspect is the result aspect. So what is the anointing? Chrisma. The word chrisma is the Greek word for the anointing and it means to smear, to rub, to apply. So what are we rubbing? What are we smearing? What are we applying? The presence of the Father of Spirits. The presence of the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's what is being applied. Matthew's Gospel chapter number 16 from verse number 1 through to verse 12. The Pharisees, the Sadducees, they came to him testing him. Many of you who want to prove to your family that you are a good Christian, learn from this passage. Jesus said to them, you are not going to have any sign, but the sign which the prophet Jonah has shown you, that is the sign. So, so many of you want to prove to your relation, want to prove to someone that you are a good woman, that you are a good man, you're wasting your time. Every time a Christian wants to prove to someone that is a Christian, they miss the point of being a Christian. Jesus told them, you're not going to have any sign from me, but the sign which is already given to you by the prophet Jonah. What was that sign? Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. That was the sign that Jesus said they already have. So don't you think if I pray for that person and their daughter gets healed, they will know that Jesus is the savior. There is nothing like that. You go to the hospital, heal everybody in the hospital. On your way out, they will arrest you that you spoil business. Some others will worship you. Is that what you want? Living the life of a Christian, live it with understanding. Don't live it without understanding. The key thing that you should get today, without understanding, you will misunderstand Jesus. You will misunderstand his words like his disciples did. His disciples misunderstood his word. He told them, beware of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They are yeast, beware of it. They are understanding bread that we eat. What Jesus was teaching or saying to them was the teaching of the Pharisees. Isaiah 11 from verse 1. There shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse and a branch shall grow out of it of his rod, roots. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The Spirit of wisdom and understanding. It's talking about Jesus. The very first experience of the Holy Spirit upon Jesus Christ, seven characteristics. For the purpose of study, we call it the seven spirits of God. One of it is a spirit of understanding. You have to understand the things of God. If you don't, you will misinterpret the things of God. Like the disciples taught, he was talking about bread. When he was talking about teaching, you have to understand the scriptures. The first step to utilizing the anointing, understanding. And that comes only by the Holy Spirit as well. So without understanding, you cannot unlock the blessings of God in the scriptures. Without understanding, you cannot enjoy what God has already given to you. In 1st John, chapter number 2, verse 27. But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you and you do not need that anyone teach you but as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things and is true is not a lie just as this anointing has taught you you should walk abide in it here it says that you have received an anointing it said the anointing teaches truth it said the anointing doesn't speak lies Jesus in John's gospel chapter 9 saw a man born blind from his from womb 
the disciples asked the question, who sinned that this man was born blind? You see, that's what we understand. When someone is in a situation, the first thing we think is their sin. But the anointing teaches us very differently. Jesus' answer was amazing. Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned, but that the works of God should be revealed in him. When he has said these things, he spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva, and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with clay. Now you see where it says anoint, smearing, rubbing. Jesus spat on the ground, made the spittle out of the mud, took it and anoint. That's it. Rub. Anoint. For the glory of God to be manifested, God allowed them to be born like that. That is not the glory of God though. To show you the difference, he allowed it. If the church wake up to their place, they won't debate about things. They will follow the footsteps. They will do exactly what he did. A New Testament church. I was born for the glory of God. I was born to reveal the glory of God. I was born to show the works of God. I was born to differentiate what is of God and what is not. I am born for the glory of God. Everyone in your life, I pray for them, that has confusion. The spirit of understanding that is upon you now, I speak it to guide them from confusion to truth. In the name of Jesus. Little one, old one, any age, you are born for the glory of God. I speak to your mind to open, to understand the mind of God, the word of God, the glory of God. As you go, you speak out of understanding. In your relationships, you function in the spirit of understanding. In your homes, may you flow with understanding. May there never be confusion in your family. The spirit of understanding. The spirit of understanding. The spirit of understanding. The spirit of understanding. Of understanding. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Hallelujah.